everybody and welcome. I want to go to space. I always wanted to do ever since I was a little boy, but I never knew how to go about that or what to do to become an astronaut. Well, as I grew older, that dream of going to space, it never faded away, but it, it never became that much of a priority for some reason. Because, let's face it, it seems a little unrealistic for some weird guy from Austria to become an astronaut. But when the European Space Agency, ESA, announced that they are looking for new astronaut candidates in 2021, that dream came to the forefront once again. Kind of a new dawn for that dream. Well, one of the requirements for applying for that job, I mean job, it's being an astronaut, this is not just a job, it's awesome. Uh, but one of the requirements for applying was being less than 50 years old. Well, I am 42 now and the last time that ESA was looking for astronauts was in 2009. So the next time when ESA is going to look for a new round of astronaut candidates, I'm going to be too old. So this is my only chance that I will ever get to maybe fly to space. Okay, I'm sitting here with the application form. So basically this is the job description. Launch, rendezvous, docking and landing operations. Well, we all know I'm familiar with that. will need to show strong motivation and be able to cope with extended periods of high workload, irregular working hours, frequent travel and long absences from home, your family and normal social life. So aside from the, the long absences, this sounds exactly like some of the previous jobs I had, except that they were not up there. And then there is this handbook for, uh, for astronaut selection. Basically what it is, is a beautifully produced uh, PDF document or slideshow. It details basically what the selection process is and how to apply. There you go. Go to jobsisa.int, do it before May 28th. And you need some, some specific documents. Create an account, fill in the online questionnaire. We will get to the online questionnaire because it's, it's a curious one. And the European Part Med Class 2 Medical Certificate, which I now have. Yay! I just came from the eye doctor. The, what's it called? The ophthalmologist. Everything is excellent with my eyes, except that I'm short-sighted. But everything else, eye pressure, visual acuity, there's like this sheet where you have to, to read text. There's like a line, which is 100%. And I went like two or three steps beyond that. So that's nice. I am now licensed to fly. Well, at least medically. And then the process, it's interesting. Let's, let's look at this slide here with, uh, with all the stages on it. So basically what they're doing is they are uh, screening uh, the candidates. Um, I have no idea how many there are going to be. The competition is really tough. Uh, there are like thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people that have applied for this vacancy. Let's jump a few weeks into the future, at least from back when I was going over the application. ESA in the meantime has released a few numbers. Back in 2008, there were 8,413 applicants, with the gender split being 83.7% men and 15.3% women. This time around, the number has skyrocketed to 22,589 candidates, with women coming in a lot stronger in comparison, increasing their share to 24%. And some of them are crazily qualified. So let's actually look at some of those people that applied. Thanks to the hashtags astronaut selection and your way to space, I was able to collect a few of the candidates. Among them is also somebody you may already know, Dr. Charlotte Goetz, who is a plasma specialist and has worked on the results of the Rosetta mission. She was the one who was kind enough to indulge in a little bit of Rosetta in KSP with me. So she is already way more qualified than me. 
Then there's Dr. Javier Santaolala, for instance, who is a particle physicist and has been at CERN. Not only is he more qualified than me, he even has a YouTube channel with more than 2 million subscribers. Like, rub it in, dude! Oh, and there is Dr. Beth Healy, who specializes in sports medicine, extreme environments and space. I mean, I love snow and everything, but she takes things to a whole nother level. After the screening, then you will be put to a test or multiple tests. It says cognitive, technical, motor coordination and personality tests. And then there is an assessment, uh, assessment center, medical tests. Uh, that will assess your physical and psychological condition in view of long duration astronaut missions. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Even if they, they, they don't select me, I'd love to go through all the stages to just experience that. And yeah, then this video is not going to be as short as I'm afraid it's going to be. The interesting thing here, uh, where do we have it? The final selection, because what, what amount of vacancy are we even talking about? It is four. It says right here that ESA will recruit an estimated, estimated, four successful candidates. Now do know that there are 22,589 people that want to get those positions, four astronauts to be chosen is just 0.02% of all applicants. But in addition to that, they will uh, establish a so-called astronaut reserve. And this will be approximately 20 of the best remaining candidates. So even if you don't get selected as an astronaut, uh, there is a chance that, uh, that they are going to pick you for the reserve. Okay, so if we bump the number up to 24 people that will be selected, then we are looking at a percentage of 0.11%. Yes, a little better, but still a very slim chance of getting picked. If you're in the reserve, you have to keep your medical up to date every year and you have to, to be at uh, where? At the EAC, uh, ESA Astronaut Center, I assume. I have to learn these things. <laughs> And uh, you have to be there for approximately one week per year. So you have to find a deal with your current employer because you won't be employed by ESA. I'm not the only one in Austria, apparently, that's attempting to do this. That doctor actually asked whether or not I wanted to have that exam for the, the astronaut application. <laughs> apparently, uh, dozens of people have already uh, came to him for, for that very reason. He said that the numbers and there are 464 Austrians among the 22,589 applicants. That's very small compared to the thousands of applicants from the bigger countries like Germany and France, of course. But if you look at the candidates per million inhabitants, Austria is in the top 10, even outperforming Germany. Yay us! I have to admit, I'm a bit proud that so many of us decided to try this avenue. Nobody's touching France, though, both in absolute numbers as well as in candidates per million. Curiously, in addition to the 22,589 applicants, there have been 367 people that have applied from non-eligible countries. Judging by the colors here in the map, it appears most of them came from India, but also some from Turkey, Iran and Brazil goes to show that the love for space does not know any borders. And neither should it. There are these, these requirements, like physical activity, proficiency in swimming, uh, which, without bragging, I very much have. Uh, flight operations, don't have any except for some frequent business flying. <laughs> And extensive underwater training, well, I have scuba training. The deepest there was, was uh, a sunken uh, Austro-Hungarian steam ship called the Baron Gauch, which was sunk, I think, in World War I, and it's at a depth of uh, 30 to 40 meters. If scuba diving and swimming is a requirement, hey, sign me up. <laughs> but then there are these, these uh, let's say, intangibles, like demonstrable teamwork skills. Okay, how do you demonstrate this? 
How do you demonstrate this in an application in a letter? Sound risk management. How do you do that? I mean, I was a paramedic for one year. I have seen everything from birth to death. Every stage in between you can imagine, I've been there. Having sound risk management there was basically the daily job because you had people's lives in your hands. Maximum age limit of 50 years. Dodge that bullet, at least for the next eight years. And what else do we have? Body mass index representing a normal weight as defined by the World Health Organization. I hate running. Need to get those pounds down. I feel you. Yeah, muscle mass is heavy. In the application form, there is a questionnaire about the job specific information. And in there, there is this interesting question. The duties of this position require moderate, moderate to arduous physical exertion involving walking, running, standing, heavy lifting, crouching, crawling, and exposure to inclement weather. Are you willing to perform arduous physical activities as part of your duties? Now, see Astronaut Application Handbook on these requirements. Okay, let's look at the Astronaut uh, Handbook. And there we have physical activities. And basically it says the same thing. <laughs> I, I wish I have a chance to, to, to show Isa what I'm capable of, you know? And, and that passion I have for space, as, as you guys all know that watch my channel. It's a long shot. It's a long shot. But I'm not gonna hit if I don't take it. I could not forgive myself if I would not even try to apply. It's Sunday, 6 a.m. and I'm running. Already sent my application to ESA. It's up to them now. All right, people, this is it. It is December now, more than half a year after I sent my application and I have received a decision from ESA's astronaut recruiting team. On behalf of the European Space Agency, we wish to thank you for your application and interest in joining the European Astronaut Corps. We regret to inform you that after very careful consideration, it has been decided not to retain your application for the post of astronaut. The reason for this decision is that other applications fitted better with our requirements for this particular position. In light of the very large number of applicants, please be informed that we are not in a position to offer further feedback. So that's it then. Dream shattered. To be honest, I can't say that I'm surprised. I'm sure there are more suitable candidates than a 42-year-old weirdo with barely a science background and who is probably too tall anyways. You heard me talk about a few of the applicants earlier, so you shouldn't be surprised either. I still think I could offer a lot to any crew of any spaceship. I thought about going back to university and crushing a few physics degrees or two over the course of the next couple of years, so my chances increase should ESA look for astronauts again. But given the fact that I will probably be in my 50s when they will look for new astronauts and that the hard cutoff is 50 years, I don't have a lot of hope for that. Guess I have to stick flying fantasy spaceships in Kerbal Space Program but maybe I can help you a little. If you are still in your 30s or maybe even your 20s or even younger and going to space is a dream of yours, you should learn from my mistakes, of which there are plenty. When it came to what I should do after high school, I chose the safe path. Law, business administration, some computer science. If you want to go to space, don't do that. Don't go the safe way. Choose physics, chemistry, material sciences, aerospace engineering, anything that will increase your chances in an astronaut selection process. Don't think about what you believe that might get you a job down the line. Don't think about that. Think about what, uh, what pays into your dream down the road. Look at the ESA requirements for the job. 
Then start exercising, get yourself in good physical condition. And when you look at your education options, look for opportunities to get experience in the field. Remember when I highlighted Dr. Beth Healy? She did medical research at Concordia Station in Antarctica. Now that's a qualification for extreme environments, if I've ever seen one. But the most important skill will be the ability to fit into a team and work together with your teammates under pressure. When something unforeseen or potentially terrible happens, are you one to easily panic? Or can you focus and work the problem to science the out of it, to quote Mark Watney in The Martian? If your dream is to be an astronaut, you need to work for it. Work hard and start early, basically yesterday if you catch my drift. Or you could just become a billionaire and buy your way into space, right? Well, no. There are around 3,000 billionaires worldwide. If you set that against the world's population, then your chances to ever become one are a few hundred times worse than the 0.02% chance of being one of the four in 22,589 for the ESA astronaut corps. Me? I can only hope for space tourism to get cheaper one day. See you in space? Maybe. <laughs>